The Deep Ellum man says everything he and his daughter owned was thrown in a dumpster after the management of his apartment building accidentally ordered maintenance to clean out his rental. I don't even know where to begin with that. I just cannot imagine what level of incompetence it takes for nobody to notice that they're clearing out the wrong apartment. I don't know if it's a miscommunication from management at a higher level or what exactly happened in that regard. But what I do know is that I would be, of course, the first person to say, well, it's time to reimburse this person, but let's see what happened instead. It turns out apartment management had the wrong unit number, and now that man says that he is out tens of thousands of dollars. Building management argues he never should have been living there to begin with. Consumer reporter Steve Noviello is on your side tonight. When I heard this, I thought two different things. For one, it sounds like a lot of deflection to me. Basically, they're trying to say, well, this guy was in the wrong anyways, so our wrong action doesn't matter. But on top of that, does it really even matter even if he is in the wrong? Because ultimately, when the police pull over someone with no probable cause and then find something on them, the charges get dismissed because the police didn't have permission the same way that they made a mistake regardless of anything else. And his attorney is going to say something very similar. They came to my door and cleaned everything out from my daughter's clothes to my clothes to everything from a toothbrush, bathing items, like they pretty much left me with nothing. And just wait until you hear exactly how all this stuff ended up. He's going to describe exactly how it went down in the next few minutes here. According to the report's narrative, a leasing agent on site said there was a misunderstanding and maintenance accidentally cleared out Abney's unit instead of the unit next door where a tenant was being evicted. So this just goes to show how careless the mistake actually was. And I guess the tenant next to him must have been really past their notice that everything was getting thrown away like this. But the whole issue is that they're just trying to cover up their mistake now. They're going to try and make it seem like that it doesn't matter what they did. And regardless of anything else, once you hear the story and exactly how things went down, you're going to have to feel a little bit of sympathy based on the fact that this man really was not doing anything wrong. All of Johnny's belongings had been thrown in the dumpster hours earlier and had been picked over by the other residents. This is video Johnny took of his discarded stuff. He says his mattress had been urinated on. This clip really speaks for itself, and that's absolutely vile, the last part, but I'm going to also let Johnny talk about it more as well, of course. This is what I was talking about. The fact that his stuff was not only thrown away, but he didn't even get the chance to recover a lot of it because it had already been stolen by the time he found out. Not only did they put my stuff out they watch people take all my property all day so yeah of course that proves that it was over the course of hours that his stuff was getting taken before he even had a chance to find out what happened and it also shows that it was hours of time passing with nobody else even noticing the mistake they made no other neighbors managed to notice that the wrong apartment was being evicted because i feel like you would know like oh this apartment has been foreclosed uh, foreclosed yeah that's not the right word at all this one has had a notice on its door for this many days and there's been no one there it's been vacant or the person just hasn't been paying rent i feel like people would notice that as opposed to the person who has not had any sort of evic eviction notice on their door and had any sort of issues prior. Property management offered to get what they could from the trash and return it to Johnny's unit. Johnny said they even had that stained mattress professionally clean. Yeah, I guess you'd say it's the least they could do, huh? To clean the piss off the mattress that you want to sleep on. That would be a nice thing to have. And keep in mind, at this point, they don't even know yet that there's something else going on that they're going to try and come at him for. This is how they're acting right now when they think that they just did this to somebody that they don't have anything against. Because they try to spin things once they realize they have a way to twist the narrative. But at this point, they're saying, oh, we'll get the stuff out of the trash for you and try to recover what we can. What about all the stuff that the neighbors took? What about everything else? They're already not doing enough as it is. But most of his and his daughter's stuff was gone for good. This door is completely gone, and this one, they just completely just broke it. You know what? I take that whole thing earlier I said about being really surprised that such a careless mistake could be made. Because these guys don't even know how a freaking door works. They, apparently, they think you just bash it with your head until it opens up. I, I don't even understand what is going on at this point. They made a deliberate effort to be as destructive as possible. I don't know if, like, the wedding crashers came in to take care of this job or what happened, but this is some messed up stuff. They told me that it was a mistake. They apologized the first night. They were overly apologetic, like, let us know anything missing. But that quickly took a turn. Even though it was your stuff, it's her apartment. It's under her name. The contract is in her name and her name. And there you have it. They found a way to feel justified in their actions, and they're going to run with it, of course. So now you have a situation where this guy is subleasing the apartment. You're all going to see that he does have receipts to prove he was the one paying for it, but it's actually his girlfriend's apartment. So I guess what they're trying to say now is that she's the only one entitled to everything in that apartment, and that she's the only one who can even make a case. 
hopefully this does actually end up happening in some way, but his attorney is also going to try to bring up some points of his own. Johnny was subletting without permission, and even though these receipts provided to us by an attorney for the Hamilton show that Johnny paid the near $3,000 in rent each month, any direct discussion about making him whole was off the table. At this point in my mind, it's just his apartment. I mean, I don't understand how, like, there has to be some big issue here, and I don't think it would be a big issue if they weren't trying to cover their own asses. We are by, like, by law. We cannot discuss anything with anybody that is not her. So yeah, that's how they're trying to say he doesn't have a right to his own possessions now. And you see the amount of receipts that there were before. Like, that must have been, what, two or three years? I'm assuming every single receipt was each month. You don't pay rent every week. So, like, he was living there for years, making the payments every month himself. Everything there was his possession. According to this lawsuit Johnny has now filed against the property management company, they gave him 24 hours to fill out his own rental application or face eviction. Wow, 24 hours to recover from losing thousands or tens of thousands of dollars in valuables and trying to find a new apartment. And they're saying that they're going to give him a chance to get his own agreement. Why can't he just have this apartment? Why can't he just continue making payments there? But on top of that, the bigger issue is that what's going to come next? Rent was paid in full. There was no reason to go into his apartment. There was no reason to throw anything away. Jason Friedman is Johnny's attorney. He says the issue of who was on the lease is irrelevant. Yeah, exactly. You don't get to just punish someone because you found out something through your own mistake and then say that you were justified. That's not how this works at all. The apartment building, they didn't know when they threw all that stuff away whose stuff it was. Yep. And adds, Johnny chose not to fill out the application or pay the fee required for one very simple reason. He chose not to because he said, I want to resolve the situation with my property that you threw away before I decide if I'm going to stay in this building. Yeah, I think I'd want to know how the building I'm paying to stay in actually handles mistakes like this because, again, it was their mistake. So I'd like to know, well, if this were to happen to me, and it did actually happen to me, what are you guys going to do to fix it before I decided to keep on living there? An attorney for the Hamilton who would not speak to us on camera but did communicate by phone and email. It's a shame that we got to face the faceless here, but you know people are going to hide behind a shield when they know that they're in the wrong and they're trying to project it onto you. Said on behalf of the building, even if Johnny did fill out the rental application, he would have been denied because he already violated the lease terms as an unauthorized occupant. This is like the fool who asks someone out and then acts like that they weren't interested in the first place when they get rejected. Like, now you're upset that he doesn't want to live there? Oh, well, we wouldn't have accepted you anyways, you fool. What are you thinking? Like, what? With me losing all my property, like, that's the last thing on my mind. Yeah, I really feel for this man. These people remind me of a phone scammer who try to place you under pressure to force you to make an irrational choice, basically trying to make it so that this guy signs away any right he has to his own possessions and just accepts defeat. According to the lawsuit, the Hamilton also alleged there was counterfeit money pulled from Johnny's things, another reason they say he would not be welcome to stay. When I heard this, it actually perked up my ears just a little bit, but <laughs> just get ready for how nonsensical it gets. Is among the discarded pile of trashed school supplies with which his daughter was supposed to start the fifth grade, we found our own. This play money, clearly marked as copy. As someone who has a bit of a passion for currency and especially numismatics, this is just embarrassing. Are you kidding me? How can you be such a blatant liar? You are trying to claim that this is a reason that you would have not allowed the person to do business with you any longer because you found currency clearly marked copy money. Something that is more than legal and clearly would never be passable in a store in the first place. You could buy this online right now and have no issues. That's why it's marked that way to make sure that nobody tries to claim that it's fake currency. It's not being made in the image of currency, but rather to look like it is if you're trying to do a photo shoot or some other thing like that and you don't actually have that much money. That's what it's for. And it was with his daughter's stuff, so I'm sure it's something that he got for her because it's something that she found entertaining. Maybe they played. Maybe he actually spent some time with his daughter and had a life that you guys just did not care about and threw away on him but that's where we're at right now these people will clearly twist anything and it goes to show that they're willing to lie or at the very least feign ignorance and act as though that this currency did not clearly say copy money where there should be a serial number right on it and basically just do anything they can to twist the narrative against this guy. It goes to show they're not good people. I'm not trying to say every landlord's a bad person, but what I am trying to say is that they're just business owners like anyone else, and usually the customer's supposed to come first, but for some reason there's a lot of people that want to put the landlord first, as if they're inviting you into their home to live there for free, or doing you some great favor. They're letting you pay to live in a building that they own so that they can make money and so that you can exist. It's a mutual exchange of funds for existence. 
just like any other business transaction would be in its own right. 